The most prominent and controversial post Merdeka political movement was born here in the streets of Kuala Lumpur. It initially began to protest the unceremonious sacking of Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim as the then Deputy Prime Minister, which sent shock waves across the country. But over time, it eventually grew into a series of unprecedented public demonstrations, civil disobedience, and sit ins by ordinary people in the streets. At first, the movement demanded the resignation of then Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad over allegations of corruption and cronyism. However, it quickly evolved, insisting reforms on social justice and social equality in Malaysia. In this episode of Sina Specials, we will trace back the reformacy movement and whether the 24 year struggle that paved the way for Anwar's rise to power was worth it. The peak of the reformacy movement's civil disobedience happened in 1998 against the backdrop of Anwar's jailing in the Sungai Buloh prison. So many of us you know, uh, came out to the street you know, to express our stand that we are not agree with uh, the way uh, uh, the government or, or Mahdi uh, treated Anwar. We, we tried to impress you know, the public that you know, Anwar had been uh, treated uh, wrongly and, and, and we need to stand for Anwar on, on this particular issue. Anwar should be treated equally uh, in court of law. The Malaysian reformers was inspired by the same movement that swept its Nusantara neighbour, Indonesia. The wave even dethroned the country's then president Suharto in 1998. The battle cry uh, uh, used by our Indonesian uh, activists was uh, reformasi, and uh, the mantra was uh, KKN, or in uh, Malaysia we call it KKN. K for corruption, uh, cronism, and N for nepotism. When asked about reformacy, it's about against corruption, against cronism, against nepotism, and uh, we fight for the change. Uh, reformacy is change. Yeah, that is basically reformacy is all about. And of course, uh, the expulsion of Anwar yeah, yeah, from the government and the, the black eye incident yeah, aggravate uh, the whole cause of uh, reformacy. In Malaysia, the reformacy movement gained ground because it was compounded by the then ongoing financial crisis. I think the two things come together. One is financial crisis exposed the weaknesses of the uh, system, uh, the economic system and causing suffering of the people. Secondly, when Anwar was sacked, while well, he was seen as the blue-eyed boys of Amno, and then he could be sacked uh, without due procedure and suffer uh, the human rights uh, violation. That awakened people um, and the call for reformacies um, started by uh, mass organizations, uh, mass mobilization protests, which uh, broke the previous very seemingly very calm very controlled society. Reformacy hustings were weekends affair, with the hotspots being Sogo, Masjid Jami, and Kampung Baru. Masjid Kampung Baru ni kebiasaannya dia berlaku lepas maghrib kat Isyak ke atas itu. Apabila pihak berkuasa mula bertindak untuk menyuraikan penyokong dengan tembakan tear gas, dengan tembakan air, air fariu dulu pedih lagi daripada air sekarang. Tembakan itu menyebabkan orang lari. Orang tua saya antara yang membuka pintu dan 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 membantu. Uh, orang tua saya dah standby dah di dulu kayak kayak plekat uh, banyak sekali ada standby. Jadi siapa saja yang masuk ke rumah dia suruh ganti kayak plekat, ganti ganti. Ganti kayak plekat, duduk duduk dalam dia tutup lampu, duduk diam-diam. Dengan harapan seberapa ramai reformis yang kita boleh bantu selamatkan kita bantu. Battered, bruised, beaten in jail were a mainstay among reformasi activists. We had been beaten by the FRU, you know, being kept into prison and locked up, for example. And I was even, you know, caught during dem demonstration in Kesas, uh, Jalan Kebun uh, uh, demonstration. So I was, I was put into a plank locked up for seven days. Yeah? And it becomes a norm for us. 
you know i think i've been detained in lockups i think more than 10 times 14 15 times i was in kamunting for one and a half years and then for in prison uh, kajang prison for another half and a, one year and a half and uh, we take it as uh, a pride in the struggle and uh, the batches of honors uh, so and basically also the lockups and uh, prisons to be our training grounds and that is where we gain strength our philosophy is that when we face with uh, violence, we rather to be the victims of violence rather than we initiate violence. Two decades of struggle uh, without any life uh, loss of life, uh, no major loss of property. Uh, the society lived peacefully despite there was a lot of uh, uh, demonstration, a lot of uh, Mass gathering. Finally, on November 24, 2022, Anwar's quest for power came to an end. But his rise as Malaysia's 10th Prime Minister was ironic. Due to none had secured enough seats to form government, Pakatan Harapan had to join hands with his political nemesis, the AMNO led Barisan National. Persoalannya siapa membantu siapa, adakah kita membantu UMNO naik itu tidak menjadi uh, soal yang begitu utama kerana yang penting adalah kita nak menstabilkan negara seperti mana yang saya sebutkan tadi bolehlah kita teruskan ego tapi negara takkan boleh jadi uh, stabil jadi dengan adanya gabungan besar bergabung dengan UMNO dan ia boleh mencapai kestabilan saya rasa ini cukup untuk kita pacu negara ke, 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 ke depan So I think this is an interesting experiment. For many, many years, um, this, com this country only know one administration. They only know one ruling party. That reconciliation is important because AMNO can provide the experience and Pakatan or the reformists can provide the critique. Mm -hmm. And if both sides are sincere, this unity government can provide practical, more prudence way of change. However, there were also those who begged to differ. This tie between PH and AMNO, AMNO won't last long. You see, the way I look at it. Because as we know that AMNO is a party that looking forward to be having a luxurious uh, taste, you know. But then if you see that they cannot anymore gain monetary reward, they might later on make an arrangement with the opposition, maybe with, with Bersatu or even PAS to take over you know, uh, the new government. Then this is what happened, uh, Shariton, you know? Shariton move will take place down the road, the way I look at it. My experience in AMNO, uh, there are no reforms, no remorse. There are the elites who are being so already trapped in the cultures of uh, Luxury, uh, yeah, extravaganza, and yeah, yeah, it leads to the corruptions. Uh, the whole lot in Amno now in the government, they are Najib, Najib's men, and they have not stopped pursuing, uh, fighting, and defending Najib. Yeah, you don't talk about being remorseful. You don't talk. They are regretting about what Najib done, not at all, and they are in the government. So any reformist-minded person should be very worried about these things. And, and of course, you know, uh, we, can't, we can't take it. Yeah, it has to be stopped. We can accept unwise by this uh, but not uh, having this sort of payments. In January 2023, Anwar officially unveiled his government's new focus, a plan called Malaysia Madani. Madina means city. Uh, Madani means people who live in a city's life to build a tamadun for Malaysia to build our society to live civilly like a, a proper civilization it is what we have to do and and the whole issues is not just political slogan but from our day-to-day -day life how do we treat each other in a way that uh, with respect with civil and how do we run the government with, uh, with respect with people who, who live civilly.
While everything was initially smooth sailing, a huge hiccup occurred following the controversial appointment of his daughter, Nurul Iza, into Anwar's government. It was a news critics deem reek of nepotism. Not even 100 days, you know, there was an announcement by not really Anwar. Uh, Nurul is the one who, who made a statement saying that she was appointed as advisor to the Minister of Finance. Now that really shocked the whole nation. Now she didn't report to the father, she report to another guy. But it goes the same. She's going back to the uh, Ministry of Finance, you know, still opening contract file, looking at contract or something. You know? But then how is that we, we say that there's no nepotism or this thing? Because the, the relationship Anwar and the father is still there. It's still under the same Ministry of Finance. I don't think at this stage we should allow that to happen. You know, I think in this case, Anwar has not been careful. Although the intention might be good, I, I can sense also, I can see also, I can understand also. You know. We know this also has uh, certain records of being very firm when they were in the government, PHO in the government 20 months. Iza was still critical, so we can expect that from her. You know? And uh, but the worry is you know, not on what she will do. But the worry is about the perception from the very beginning you know, when you, you compromise the issues of uh, to ask you ask me, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't happen because please. Apa dosa? Dosa ni lah dia nak jadi menteri. Jadi letak atau tidak orang akan cakap soal itu. Pengalamannya cukup berharga. Kita tidak melalui kesukaran yang dia lalu. Dia melaluinya. Segala kesusahan menjadi ahli parlimen untuk tempoh lebih tiga penggal daripada 2008 menjadi ahli parlimen. Kemudian pernah duduk dalam jawatan kuasa kira-kira uh, wang negara. Pernah duduk dalam uh, uh, TVET. Pengalaman ini semua memberikan kelebihan uh, kepada Nur Iza untuk menduduki posisi itu. The phenomenon of nepotism is deeper than just appointing uh, your own family member in uh, position, right? Whether it's position of power or not. I think to think that not appointing Nuriza, then we can avoid nepotism, then I think that is also very naive. Malaysia has been on a political roller coaster ride since 2020. It saw the rise and fall of three prime ministers. In his royal address in parliament, the Yandi Petron Agung hoped that Anwar will be the last prime minister under his reign, which will end in January 2024. Sebelum better berangkat pulang ke negeri Pahang, Darul Makmur. But question is, how long will his Madani administration last? There will come a time and that uh, there will be clashes of interest. We cannot talk about Madani, about good governance, when he, we have a Deputy Prime Minister who has 47 charges in court. <laughs> if you are really reformist, you won't be sitting down with someone who are corrupt beside you, right? Uh, for whatever reason. The struggle is about change. It's about principle. It's about fighting the elites who has been robbing the country for many years. And they are there. You are rubbing shoulders with all these people. Yeah. So how do you explain that?